and thank you for your question. Um, I have not ignored, one cannot ignore what's going on outside, and nor has our government. However, we had um, a, a, a member here earlier asking for unanimous consent for a motion to end the blockades. And the, the honourable members on the, of, of the opposition didn't agree. They, they said nay to that motion. So we have been reaching out, we have been trying, and we have been asking for an end to the blockade. We have been offering support to the City of Ottawa, to the province of Ontario, to end this blockade and others. And we have been consistent in saying that these illegal activities should be ended. That has not been the case on the other side of the aisle. So I would ask all members to support an end of this, to this blockade. Reprise the debat, continuing debate, the Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and I, uh, I'm really pleased to be uh, up talking uh, to what I think is a, a very important and critical uh, debate uh, in this place. Uh, I would say and suggest that it's somewhat historical in the sense that, you know, we're trying to move forward from what has been an incredibly tough couple of years on Canadians. And I just wanted to remind you, Mr. Speaker, that I will be sharing my time uh, with the Honourable Member from St. Albert, Edmonton. I have uh, been a Member of Parliament now for six years. Um, I don't think I've ever seen in my 57 years the country as divided as it is today. Divided along regional lines, divided along race lines, divided along faith lines, divided, um, we're now pitting neighbours against neighbours, uh, depending on what their health status is. And it's not the way the country should be governed, Mr. Speaker. And we've seen over the last six years a, a divisive nature of a Prime Minister who, you know, does everything he can not to unite Canadians, but to divide Canadians. And we've seen it in some of the language, and this is why, you know, Conservatives have really uh, tried to uh, take on a solution-oriented approach to this, uh, this crisis that we're in, uh, to work with the government. Earlier this week, um, the Leader of the Opposition sent a letter to the Prime Minister asking to convene a meeting of uh, the opposition parties and himself to try to come up with a solution, try to work through this problem. And even today, um, the Honourable Member and the Leader of the Bloc Québécois uh, brought it up several times in question period, actually tried to get the government and the Prime Minister to meet with opposition parties. Um, emergency services are stretched out, they're stressed, they're doing everything they can to deal with not just the manifestation of that frustration and that anger uh, here in Ottawa, uh, but also what's now cascading across the provinces. And we're seeing blockades at entry points, critical entry points, uh, not just for our infrastructure, but also uh, for our supply chain, the Ambassador Bridge, Emerson, Manitoba. We're seeing it in Coots, Alberta. And it, I, I want to say that I appreciate that level of frustration. As the Member of Parliament for Barrie Innisville, I've certainly heard over the last two years from businesses, from people who've been affected, lives and livelihoods, businesses that have been lost, mental health issues among young people, the crisis that exists uh, on mental health. People are tired, they're frustrated, they're angry, they're lashing out, they're, they're, they're protesting, they're calling members of parliament, e emailing members of parliament. And it's our job to listen, Mr. Speaker, to every single one of those voices. That's our job. Regardless of whether we agree with them, reg regardless of whether we form the same ideology, it's our job to listen. And I think in listening to all of this frustration that's being manifested through uh, these protests, we need to come together as leaders in parliament to find a solution, to work together to do that. And I will say that the Leader of the Opposition this morning, Mr. Speaker, uh, called out and made a plea for the protest to end. We've heard what people are going through. We know what they want. And it's up to us as leaders in this country to work to find those types of solutions 
so that people can go home, so that they know that their political leaders are working together. And that's what this motion is all about, Mr. Speaker. It's about creating a plan, a strategy, an exit strategy so that we can get back to some sense of normalcy. 90% of Canadians are vaccinated at this point, And I understand that you know, there's still some issues and some challenges. But restrictions and lockdowns, the types of things that we're seeing that's being implemented by this government, continued by this government, whether it's border testing um, and anything, any other measures that they've been implementing, uh, people are tired and they're weary of it. And so we need an exit strategy. We need to make sure that our econ economy is functioning on all cylinders. We, need, we can't just go to restrictions and lockdowns by default. We have to use every tool that we can in our toolbox. Vaccinations are one, rapid tests, masking. You know, I think it's up to Canadians now to, de to make their health choices, to determine um, how we're going to get back to some sense of normalcy. And government can facilitate that, Mr. Speaker. Government can do that by ending the lockdowns, ending the restrictions, ending the mandates. And I've been dealing with a situation in the Ethics Committee uh, where we're seeing what is a pattern of massive overreach from a privacy standpoint on Canadians and the collection of data without the consent of Canadians. And if you start, as I say, as I said yesterday in a question period, start connecting the dots, it's becoming increasingly concerning to Canadians what's happening with respect to their privacy rights. And so we have to take down the temperature. We have to stop the inflammatory language, the incendiary language that in often, oftentimes is coming from this government. In fact, we had one of their MPs earlier this week talk about a concerted effort to stigmatize Canadians, to create this division. This is not a time for us to be divided. This is a time for us to be united, Mr. Speaker, in our cause. And that cause is to ensure that these lockdowns and these mandates end so that Canadians can back, get back to some sense of normalcy in their lives, so businesses can function, so that lives and livelihoods aren't lost. That's what we're talking about today. We need a plan and we need that exit strategy. And I know that you know, the Prime Minister today, even through question period and all day yesterday, was talking about science and evidence-based decision-making. Even the Chief Public Health Officer of Canada is saying that we have to get back to some sense of normalcy. In fact, there's public health officers right across the country, premiers that are announcing no more lockdowns, no more mandates, no more vaccine passports, because they understand that we have to get back to some sense of normalcy, if not for the economy of this country, but for the mental health of our nation, because people are suffering. And sadly, as I sit here and I listen to the Prime Minister speak day in and day out about science and evidence-based decision-making, the reality that the Prime Minister, his knowledge of science, the only science he understands is political science. It's the only science that he understands, political science, and how to keep his job instead of worrying about the people that he represents. And he doesn't just represent people who agree with his ideology, doesn't agree with, um, you know, if people don't agree with you, you're the prime minister of the entire country. You're not supposed to just represent those people who agree with you and those people who don't. You're the Prime Minister of all Canadians. And that's, I think, what's seriously lacking here. And I don't know why. Despite the calls of the opposition, all of the opposition parties, even the leader of the NDP today, talked about convening a meeting so that we can work together to find a solution to this crisis that is not just seizing our country. I would suggest that it's, it's starting to paralyze our country, Mr. Speaker. And yet, still, more political games. Unanimous consent motion today by the Liberals just to pour more fire on the gas, or more gas on the fire. You know, like I'm sick of it, and Canadians are sick of it. And they want their, they want their leadership, and they want leaders in this country to be working together. And so today's motion 
to direct the government to create this exit strategy, to create this exit plan, I think is, is one of prudence, it's one that's necessary, and it's one that Canadians are desperately hoping for, Mr. Speaker. Desperately hoping for. I know the people I represent in Barrie Innisfil are fed up. They're tired. They're angry. They want to get back to some sense of normalcy. They want to be able to travel again. They don't want to have to pay $600 for a family of four for a PCR test. We need to get back to some sense of normalcy, Mr. Speaker, and I pray and I hope that the government is listening to what we're proposing, because it's done with sincerity and it's done on behalf of Canadians, the same Canadians who sent us here. Thank you. Castillo and Kamal Jack, questions and comments. Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the, the comments uh, from the, uh, the Opposition House Leader. Having said that, um, when the leader of the official opposition stood up and said, well, we want to see an end to the uh, illegal blockades, that's a great thing to say. But actions do speak louder than words. For the previous uh, couple of weeks, they have been supporting in many different ways, in particular through social media and many of the actions that have been taken uh, by Conservative members of Parliament. That's what's led us in good part to the blockades that we're now seeing at our borders and causing horrific economic damage, jobs losses and so forth. My question to my friend is, would he not agree if they want to put some water on the fire, a part of that means for the, many of those conservative, same Conservative MPs to start putting on their social media and start talking to their, the, some of their friends that are out there and saying it's time to end this illegal convoy and go home and let Ottawa uh, get back to, to normalcy. Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I think the Leader of the Opposition was quite clear in her statement this morning. In fact, I was quite clear in my statement just now that these protests do have to end. Uh, Canadians have been heard. Uh, and it's up to the government. We're not the government, Mr. Speaker. We're members of the Opposition. They're the government. They have all of the tools and all of the levers of power. And if they choose to, instead of, as I said earlier, inciting, with incendiary and inflammatory language, trying to pour more gas on the fire. If they wanted to really work together, leveraging all the tools of power that they have, they could work to end this. Because as I said, Canadians are frustrated. They want the mandates to end. They want to get back to some sense of normalcy. They want life to resume. And they don't want their kids to suffer any more from the mental health crisis that they're already suffering from. They have the power. They have the tools. They can work collaboratively to try to find a resolution to this problem. But the protests do have to, they have to go home, and we have to get back to some sense of normalcy. Thank you. Question and commentary, questions and comments. L'honorable député de Beauport, Limoilou. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai lu la motion. J'ai fait un discours dessus, donc j'espère bien que je l'ai lu. Mais ce matin, euh, j'entendais le euh, député de Rosemont, la petite patrie, accuser les conservateurs de vouloir tout déconfiner sans, sans mesure de, 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 de tempérance, disons, et du jour au lendemain. J'aimerais que mon collègue précise la motion et le fait qu'un plan, ce n'est pas forcément un déconfinement immédiat et sans prévision. Merci. L'honorable député de Barry Innisfil. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I, I was involved in the crafting of the motion. And, uh, you know, it, it, the initial crafting of the motion was, was somewhat prescriptive in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, maybe it was a bridge too far to start. And this is why we, we brought it back a little bit to talk about the government um, uh, developing a plan by February 28th. Now, we're not naive. We don't think that things are just going to. Um, you know, all of a sudden stop. Uh, there has to be some period of transition, but we need an exit plan and we need an exit strategy. And that's what this motion is calling for on the part of the government, to use those levers of power in order to ensure that we develop this type of plan so that Canadians can get back to some sense of normalcy, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Question and comment the Honourable Member for Vancouver Kingsway. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, uh, early in the pandemic, uh, epidemiologists uh, observed that this virus knows no borders, and uh, they warned that 
if we didn't have a global vaccination program, then what they described as immune escape variants would undoubtedly emerge and make their way even to places like Canada that have very high vaccination rates. One of uh, the uh, responses to this is to allow countries around the world to have access to the technology and vaccine intellectual property that the public paid for so that they could actually produce vaccines and vaccinate their citizens faster, not only being fairer to them, but helping Canadians stay safe. I'm wondering uh, if my honourable colleague agrees with the NDP that Canada